that I forget the name of in the Flaming Fist. Wait, 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 I have it. Zodj. Captain Zodj. Thank you. Saves me from the flip back. You know, he deputizes you because the city of El Terrell has disappeared and refugees are flooding into Baldur's Gate. There has also been a string of murders that they believe have been perpetuated by cultists worshipping the Dead Three, certain evil gods in the area. And he sent you to meet a contact of his in Elfsong Tavern, a uh, spy named Tarina. Well, Tarina had her own problems involving uh, some pirates she pissed off. And she agreed to tell you where the uh, cultists were uh, doing their foul deeds if you helped defend her against these bandits. The pirates came. A fight ensued. A single player survived. And when, that, and when Steve woke up in the alley, Tarina was there and informed him of the location of the de of a bathhouse that the Dead Three were operating out of, and then it would, at that point he uh, went inside, got a room, and went to sleep, sleeping off, you know, one hell of a fight. So morning has come, and so Steve, you're doing like your normal morning shit. The other. Three guys, you know, Elrond, Torment, and Sheena. You guys were also deputized by Captain Zaj. And you were informed of the first group that he sent there, and he just hasn't heard anything back from them. So uh, he told you to go there and find out what happened, and if necessary, assist them. Yeah, so essentially what happened, boys, is uh, everybody fucking died, and I'm here. What's up? <laughs> Reinforcements have arrived. How you doing, man? What's up, dude? Thanks for the help. <clears throat> so, good thing you missed this whole ordeal because uh, I was died, and then I was alive again, and then I died, and it was just a whole thing. So, you know, we're here. We're going to rock on. We got some things to do. You guys are informed of already of everything that we have to do, so let's get on it. <laughs> All right. So, where's this so-called bathhouse you speak of? Oh. Uh, you know, um, I don't have my notes in front of me, so <laughs> under if you could help me with that. Yeah, that's not a problem. So, Tarina had informed you, Steve, that several blocks northwest of the Elfsong Tavern was a public bathhouse uh, with a walled garden and frolicking nymphs carved into its front gates, and that the followers of the Dead Three have been seen coming and going from this bathhouse. And that inside, she had she informed you that there was a secret door that leads down into a dungeon where the dead three are performing their foul rituals. Yeah, so we should, like, totally go there. All right. I'll pay my, pay my respects to my dead brother. Oh, yeah, we should probably do that, too. Yeah, like... <laughs> Shout out, shout out to the homies. Shout out to Chair Girl. She just, you know, did some cool things and beat a dude with a chair. You guys uh, missed it. It was pretty chair, cool. Chair Girl, I've heard the stories. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of felt it when my twin sister died. So, <laughs> were you guys related? <laughs> yeah, we're sisters. Wow. No, not impressive. me, and Chair Girl. Oh, I thought you meant Chair Girl. Yeah. No. She was the real MVP. Mm -hmm. So yeah, buck up, boys. Let's go. I head northwest. All right, you guys. You know, head out into the uh, foggy early morning streets. Merchants and sailors, kind of, you know, you can be seen carrying out their morning rituals, you know, sailors heading from the taverns down to their ships or vice versa. Merchants carrying carts full of goods towards the wide. It's a bit chilly this morning. Uh, the fog kind of has like a sticking quality to it. Like as you walk through, you, you start feeling like you're slightly damp. 
but it's nothing horrible. And yeah, it only takes you about a half hour to, to make your way the several blocks through crowded streets. And you see that before you is this uh, bathhouse. It is a one-story stuccoed building. There are stained glass windows visible. And it, it has clay roof tiles. A ten foot tall wall encloses excuse me, a large courtyard outside the southeast corner of the building. The closed wooden door to the courtyard are engraved with images of smiling nymphs dancing and frolicking in water. Are they friendly? <laughs> it's images. Oh, Sorry, I'm not with it, boys. I'm sorry. I know hockey can be pretty exciting. <laughs> Is there I'm, actually at, I'm actually at cookout right now, getting a milkshake. Oh, hurry up. Is there anyone uh, at the front gate or anywhere that leads up to the front door? Uh, some people are walking by, but they don't seem to be paying it um, any attention. Is there a toll? To get in? Uh, generally not. You you would just, you know, it's just kind of assumed that if you're coming in, you're there to use the baths, and it's not a big deal. All right, what's the play, boys? Hmm. Steven, did you ask Tarina what these cultists might look like or what they might be wearing? I'm sure I did, but they are totally in my notes that are at home. So if um, I could get uh, some help on my notes, that'd be great. I don't know if you talked to her that much or not. I feel like I didn't. Um, yeah, she kind of just gave you the intel and then and then fucked off. All right, kind of like uh, go up to the start of the walkway and kind of see if I notice anybody out of the ordinary as far as a cultist. All right, so you're, so you're just on the street, kind of walking up to the main door. Yeah, right. um, at least the walkway to the door, I would suppose, or is the door on the on the street? It's basically like like there's like the street. Well, like a, up, there's a garden in front, right? Um, well, you're not there yet. Like you can tell that the there's this wall that encloses a garden, mm -hmm. but uh, there's a closed like pair of wooden doors, and that's what's got the nymphs engraved on it. So you'd have to go into the courtyard first. Oh, okay. It's a 10 foot wall. Hmm. You know, like, like if you were looking like, like this would be kind of like the street would be along the bottom of that image. So you kind of like step up, go across the sidewalk, and then there's doors. Oh, okay. Um, can I knock on the doors? Yeah, you knock on the doors. Kind of a heavy kind of thudding noise as you do so. The unlatched gate just kind of starts gently swinging open. Hmm. Can I like, peek my head through, see if I see anyone inside? Yeah. All right, so you kind of peek your head through, and you can see that there's this uh, L-shaped courtyard featuring a trimmed lawn and nicely manicured shrubbery. The yard is decorated with white marble benches and stone fountains each in the form of a smiling nymph tipping a jug that spills water into a circular stone basin. Hmm. And then is there an, another door into the bathhouse? Sorry, yes, there is. Uh, you can kind of see that, you know, you would kind of walk north following the yell, and there's a, uh, like, a recessed doorway. You know, you can also see kind of just lounging about, you know, four people uh, appeared. You know, they two of them appear to be merchants. One's a sailor. The other might be, like, a priest. But, he, like, this isn't his temple. It's more like he came here to relax type stuff. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think? You guys want to just approach the door? You want to explore around the perimeter? I'm going to go ahead and strip secret doors so most people don't know about it. I'm going to go ahead and strip and walk in. Okay. Let's get naked, boys. 
All right, Steven and Fiend get naked. Okay. <clears throat> so, so you guys kind of walk into the baths, kind of starting to take your clothes off and loosen stuff. Uh, can I stay in the garden still? Sure. Yeah, and, and uh, so who's walking inside? Me and Steven. All right. Yeah, I'm in there. All right, yeah. So you guys walk in, and you, you know the walls of this uh, 20-foot-high pillared chamber are adorned with frescoes of bathing royalty. Natural light streams through stained glass windows, creating colorful patterns on the tiles of polished blue marble that cover the floor. Three shallow, sunken pools contain scintillating perfume-scented water. White marble benches bearing stacks of dry towels are situated near the pools, each of which comes equipped with a pair of brass faucets. And you can see, you know, again, you know, a couple more uh, people kind of lounging about, bathing. On the far side, you can see two doors, one going to the north and one going to the south. Do you want to hop in a bath? Right in the bath. Just how right many people bath. are in there? Just me and you. Oh, just us? No, there are three other yeah. people. Two in the two in the northern bath, one in the southern bath. The western bath is unoccupied. Huh. All right. West. Yeah, let's go talk to some people, dude. I feel like that's important. All right, to the north. To the north. It is. <laughs> All right. So you approach the northern bath. You can see that the per that it is a dwarf and a human bathing in there. Mm-hmm. And as you walk over, they kind of shift around slightly in the bath as if to make room for you. Cool. I asked them if I can or if we can join. Yep, the dwarf's kind of nice. It's like, aye, plenty of room in the water for all of us. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and just sit down. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to climb in there. I think I speak dwarvish, too. I'm actually positive I speak dwarvish. Okay. Does, he did answer you he in did... common. Yeah, okay. yeah, we're... we're... Most people, common, most people in uh, cities and whatnot, are going to speak common. And you're going to have to lead the way on this, buddy. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm literally driving home, so I don't have my notes. So you're going to have to. That's all right. You're fine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the dwarf and dwarvish if he's noticed uh, anything weird going on recently in the bathhouse. Well, uh, not really anything unusual at all. Uh, once in a while, uh, some people, uh, you know, s- you know, carry some things, and storage-like materials, out of the uh, northern uh, massage room. But uh, I'm sure it's uh, just them dealing with some refuse and whatnot. Uh, how big would you say the? Uh... Like the bags and stuff of refuse were. Well, it was small enough for a man to carry, not not too large, but they weren't exactly small if you catch my meaning. Yeah, gotcha. there's some bodies in there. That's what I'm trying <laughs> to get to. Uh, oh, I. No, no, they want they want body sized. You know, uh, trust me. If I if I believe they were carrying bodies out of there, I wouldn't tell you a damn thing. If you had any speculation, what do you think it is? Well, I I think that the perfume and the massage oils have to come from somewhere, and they're probably just getting rid of some uh, old stock that they had no longer had use for. And you're for sure that there's no weird smell, there's no like scented smell and stuff. 
Yeah. Well, it is the perfume, but other than that, uh, no. It smells fine in here. Well, that's all I got. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm just going to get up real I'm just going to get up real quick. Uh, go outside. Or pop my head back out. Pop my head outside. Kneel to the others that they might want to come in and check the... Was it the northern door? You said under? Yeah. Yeah. You might want to come in and see if they can go check out what's going on behind that door. You mean speak quietly, right? Not yell. Yeah. Hey, really really quick out of character. What uh where is our clothes and gear and stuff? Kind of beside us. Well where did you put it when you took it off? <laughs> oh I didn't get that far. I pretty I'm, I'm... So, so normally in a bathhouse like this you would just kinda of pile everything up at you know near the bath that you're entering on like you know near the wall or something. Okay, so it's pretty. It's it's in it's in arm's reach. Generally, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, under. Um, okay, obviously this some shrubbery, yes. well trimmed, and then there's the, ben- the benches of the rectangles and the curved one in the corner. Uh-huh. The circles are those fountains or those statues? Are fountains with statues in the center. Hmm. Okay. You know, there are the smiling nymphs tipping a jug that spills water into the basin. Can I in, in, investigate the fountains, I guess, or see if there's anything out of the ordinary? Sure. Is there coins in the fountain? There is not. Darn. Is there anything peculiar about these fountains? Like, maybe there's a... Nothing strikes you immediately. Why don't you give me an investigation check? Mm-hmm. Investigation... Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Shit, sorry. <laughs> Under? Yes. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so you kind of investigate the fountain, and as far as you can tell, it's just a standard fountain. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, it's, it's supplied through some type of subterranean water mechanism. But uh, other than that, there's nothing unusual about it. Okay. I'll go ahead and head in the east door. And stand up by stand up by the, the bath to the north where the homies are. I'm going to enter, and I'm going to go all the way to the west side towards that bench. I'm going to pass past the northern door and uh, just do a little bit of eavesdropping, see what I can hear through the door. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check, then. Yeah, so you kind of go by the door, and... You can hear, like, some bottles clinking and feet shuffling inside that tells you that there's someone in there. Uh, Though you don't hear any, like, screams or stabbing sounds or anything like that. No talking or whispers or murmuring? You do not hear any talking or whispering. So probably just a single person in there sorting stuff? One or two people, from the sounds of it. Like, you can't tell perfectly, you know? Just from sound, but uh, not many people. Wait, is this the northern door? Yeah, he walked by yeah. the northern door, kind of taking a listen. So, so I'm pretty, so I'm pretty close, right? I can. From you are path. all, you are all inside the the central bathhouse area. Okay. I walked okay. right next to the door and listened. I'm going to sit on the western bench and just pretend to read a book. Okay, so we're so we didn't hear any talking or anything. You did not. He speak. didn't. Okay. I didn't. 
None of you have heard any talking coming from that room. Okay. Uh, is there a crack at the bottom of the door? Yes. Can I can I see that? Can I see? Can I just see if I can see any like feet or anything? Okay. So you kind of bend over and start kind of looking around in that. Can you give me a perception check? Yeah, Dylan. Can you do my perception check for me? Um, I don't know what your advantage is. Uh, so perception is plus three. Yeah, yeah. You, you look under. You can tell that there's that there's more like there must be a window or something into that room because it's natural sunlight. Uh, but you don't see anything. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go join my buddy over there on the bench. <laughs> okay. I get up and walk away. <laughs> All right, cool. I didn't want to hang out with you. Anyway. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> You're naked, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> go back well, to bath. <laughs> All right, so I so I get over there and I start pleasing. <laughs> he cut out. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't don't do that. Um. All right. Yeah. Well, if you want to get up, that's fine. Cool. I'll just fucking chill there. And just I'm gonna go. you know, keep an eye on things. I'm gonna go okay. sit in Steven's lap. Oh, All right. All right. I push him off and I take his gold. Okay. Naked. Well, well make... she's naked. <laughs> they don't have gold on them. So, yeah, we they don't are, have gold on. They're us. naked, so there's no gold to grab unless you're like trying to shove your hand up in the prison pocket. <laughs> Wait, I don't know. Did you, did you stuff anything up there? My character's yeah, welcome for you to go I'm going to make it painful. No lube. Okay, I, I just know the bad. Like anyway, under, I'd like to um, just, just <laughs> walk through the door very casually if it's unlocked and uh, uh, see what's inside that northern door. All right, it's yeah. like walk through like I'm looking for the bathroom. It's basically right, yeah. So you walk in there. You can see that there is a, uh, in the center of the room, there is a massage table draped in clean towels. And a uh, woman who is literally have been uh, arranging some uh, bottles on the eastern wall kind of turns around as you walk in. Says, "Ah, welcome. Are you here for a, a massage?" I look around. Sure. How much? Uh, the massage itself has no cost, though you are free to tip as you will. All right. <clears throat> well, then I'll ask her how she'd like me. Up on the table, please. Face down. All right. You want me to disrobe or keep my clothes on? Disrobe, please. Sorry, for you. Right. I forgot you were one of the ones that hadn't taken all the clothes off. <laughs> yep. Steven and I are the only ones naked. Not anymore. Yeah, that's, that's like two-thirds of the present party. <laughs> now there's a naked fur bulk. All right, yeah, so, you know, you, know, you get up on there, and uh, she uh, starts rubbing oil on you and starts giving you a massage. Is this oil gluten-free? <laughs> I have no idea what that is. That's so probably. <laughs> That's a lot of hair. <laughs> I'm sure she's had worse customers. Yeah, yeah th think like, you know, the, like, burly, sweaty-ass sailors that come in. Oh, gross. <laughs> so you're, you're new around here. I don't believe I've seen you before. Yep. Just came in with the last batch. Ah, unfortunate what happened. Some of us were more fortunate, but uh, yeah, the whole city being gone is a bit of a downside. So what's interesting around here? Oh, there's always interesting things to do in Baldur's Gate. Uh, have you been to the Wide yet? Isn't that that big market? Mm -hmm. It is. Up in the upper city. I haven't gotten that way yet. Uh, any particular stalls to look for? Oh, well, it depends on what strikes your interest. Uh, there are stalls for almost everything there. Uh, Baldur's Gate... Uh, 
among other things, is a ma is a trading city, and we have uh, access to many different markets, some of which uh, you won't find anywhere else on the Sword Coast. Fabulous. I'll have to swing up that way. All right, really quick, I'm out of character. I am back on my PC, so I have everything in front of me. Okay. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Sorry about that, boys. I didn't. I didn't anticipate being so late. No problem. Who opened up my? Who opened this up for me? All right. So I'm. I'm on that bench. Uh. Uh -huh. trying... Yeah, we are. Oh, I forgot you're over there with me. You fucker. Um. Has anybody else walked in, or is it just the same couple? Of... Same same couple of people. It doesn't Easy appear to be crowd. particularly busy early in the morning. Okay. Uh, there was that tub that I didn't walk into, um, that just had the one guy in it. Yeah. The cell. I'm gonna go talk to that guy. All right. Yes, yeah, so you walk oh, over yeah, there, man. and, uh, it looks to be a lizard folk that is, uh, bathing. Does he by chance speak common? Do you ask him? Yes. Yes. All right, and uh, he kind of he has kind of like a sibilant accent to it, but he's like, uh, "Of course I am, I do." Okay. Well, we are we are visiting, and we just we're looking for something out of the ordinary. Have you noticed anything with the place that you find a little bit odd or troubling? Well, I'm not really sure. You see, my. Uh... My memory isn't what it used to be. However, I I do have this odd condition that meta, that uh, shiny objects do tend to refresh my memory. If you catch my meaning, I got some I got some silver. So let me toss them to silver. Oh yes, yes. Uh, it, it it I do remember a bit. There uh, there have been some. Uh, well, let's just say the employees are always told to get out of here by midnight. And tarry not a minute longer. To make that what you will. Hmm. Okay. Um. So by you hear that, do you stay pretty late? Why don't you go ahead and make a persuasion check at this point? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hold on. Find it. Persuasion. Oh. Oh, of course I'd got shit, though. Uh, so he kind of smacks his lips a little bit and says, I, I don't know. My my memory about that's a little fuzzy. All right, toss him another gold, or another silver. Yeah, well, well, let's just say uh, I, I live, you know, block down or so, and uh, this is the bathhouse I kind of frequent. Yeah, I, I, I hear things every now and then, and sometimes I'm here late. Huh. This would help. I'm so sorry, boys. I literally was in the car, so kind of <laughs> in and out where I know what I don't know what's going on. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and walk to the south room cluelessly. Okay. So you walk into the south room, and uh, inside is another massage table, and a human there with um, kind of like long-ish blonde hair. Because they're ridiculous. Um, and as you're looking, you can't really tell whether he's a man or a woman. He kind of turns to you, and the way he speaks, he almost is whispering as you kind of walk in, and uh, you know, which further doesn't help with the whole uh, situation of trying to figure out if he's uh, a man or a woman. And he's <laughs> like, uh, ah, yes, well, if you're here, please get on the table, and we can get started. <laughs> you keep saying man or woman, but he's describing him as he. <laughs> Okay. Um, he, he is androgynous looking. 
<laughs> and he's soft spoken. I use he because English does not have a neuter second person pronoun. Oh, that makes sense. Other than it. Singular. Yes, but it generally has a negative connotation. All right, can I approach like a couple steps forward, act, acting clueless, kind of still, like I don't know exactly where I'm at, but kind of like glance around the room and see if I notice anything suspicious in the room, like maybe a, a hat or anything out of normal. Sure. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. <laughs> Oops. Oh my god. Now nah, it looks it looks entire like you know there's a massage table there's some massage oils up on a on a thing the masseuse is telling you to uh get up on the table. Nothing out of the ordinary. All right. Well, can I get my I guess I'll get up on the table and leave my things just in reach on the side of the table. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh the the human uh, introduces introduces uh, himself. Uh, he says, uh, I'm Yabaz, and I will be working on you today. And he starts massaging you. Oh, thank you. Pretty fucking guy. <laughs> his, his name is Mumble Mumble. <laughs> Sorry, did you guys not hear me? <laughs> it just sounded like a bunch of consonants smashed together. <laughs> Yabaz. 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 He's gonna fondle your balls. <laughs> gonna fondle your balls. Oh god! He's about to lick that ass too. <laughs> anyway, uh, so how's my massage going? It's going well. She is a very skilled masseuse. And uh, back to my back to my little situation. I want to ask this guy if he can see his if he can see the bathhouse from his place of residence. He said he was a block away. Yeah, but sometimes a block you can still see shit. And he he kind of he, he sits there, kind of like kind of like uh, stroking his uh, chin. Does he doesn't have a beard or anything? He's just doing like this very human motion, despite having a like a head like a lizard. And he's like, you know, I I I really couldn't tell you. <laughs> you gotta go broke talking to this guy. Mm. Out of character, <laughs> Jake. Can you, can you let? Chewie and his dialogue go. <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay. I mean, I, I actually kind of enjoy the bouncing between the three stories. It's a lot better than most sessions sometimes. <laughs> I thought I thought you were going for something there, and then like, sure. it was like a one sentence and got cut off, so that's my bad. <laughs> All right. Tell you what. I'll grease your pockets just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. But you got to give me something substantial here. So I toss I toss up my last two silver. I said, "You better make it worth it." And he, he nods and says, "Well, how about this? I'll give you a very straight answer. No, I can't see the bathhouse from my apartment." <laughs> I told you you're gonna go broke talking to that guy. I told you, you know, happens. Um, all right. I will say though, since you are so generous, that I have been around here at night. And I've seen very strange and dangerous-looking folk heading in and out of the bathhouse despite it being closed. Now, naturally, I'm not going to get involved in any of that. And, you know, because I mostly like living. Okay, well, but the, take but my... But you seem the sort to uh, enjoy that sort of thing. Yeah, take my take my generosity and, and keep this between you and I, just man to lizard. Folk. Of course. What uh, I've, what I've forgotten mean? our conversation already. What uh, what do you mean, uh, weird, strange folk? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, you just not... ask him to drop it. I mean, <laughs> you guys, don't make this hard on me, please. I'm still learning. You're, you're doing it on your own. I don't have to help. <laughs> <sighs> he just you know. said he forgot the whole conversation, and then he I know about but... it. But not until after I'm asking this one more question. Come on. <laughs> Shady looking folk. Are you jumping folk. back in time right now? 
I don't like, know. My memory's uh, a little fuzzy. I got that condition, you know. Uh, Just well, put your you clothes know, back on. I sorry. I uh, you guys. So, sorry, your brain sucks. See you later. All right. All right. So back to our massage. Um, um, she getting near the the, the end of yeah. uh, like like one portion of what the massage is. All right, I'll give her uh, just a handful of silver, three three pieces of silver, and I'll uh, ask her. So how how much would it cost me to to rent your room out for the day? Oh, the the whole day. Well, I'm not really sure. No one's ever asked me that before. Well, I I imagine uh, we could probably do it for. Uh, Say uh, a gold piece. All right. Tell you what, I'll give you two. Oh, you can go and have the day off. I promise it'll be in the exact same condition it is right now. Uh, make a persuasion check. You have advantage because you've bribed her, but it's still kind of like, you know, shady as fuck. <laughs> Or out of character, I love when you say fuck. Okay. Was that all, or <laughs> was there more to that? <laughs> no, it's just it just sounds extra awesome coming out of his out of his mouth. Because I take him so serious as a storyteller, so when he says fuck, it's just funny. It's not funny. It's amazing. It's quite. I you know, like when you watch somebody on YouTube that doesn't normally swear and they swear. It just catches you off guard. And it's like, oh, oh yeah, I guess they're human too. Yeah, yeah. Like, like then, when, when you run into your fifth grade teacher in a bookstore and she stubs her toe and starts swearing. Essentially, yes, dude. You're my fifth grade teacher. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there, there's Boy, a lot to worry. unpack there, but we're playing D and D, so we'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she's kind of like, well, I'm. I'm I'm really not supposed to, but as long as you don't tell anyone, I, th I think you'll be okay. Right. Wonderful. And by the way, you're an amazing masseuse. Oh, thank you. And she slips right out that door. Cool. Yeah, the rest of the party that's like kind of in like the... Well, except for uh, the guy getting the massage in the south room by Yabaz. Um, you guys see the woman leave the uh, northern room that uh, Sheena went into and out the uh, eastern doors. What did that cost me? Two gold and three silver? Yeah. yeah. Uh, where did we come... What doors did we come in at again? I'm sorry. Uh, well, you came in off the street into the courtyard from the south doors. Okay. You guys are currently inside the building at uh, D2. Like, um... That's the bathhouse like proper building. D1 is the outer courtyard. So she went out of the double doors from D2 to D1. If anybody has like a boost on stealth, I would consider following her. Why? I don't know. Maybe we, she... we know the. Okay. We are here looking for a secret door. Sure. She is staff who is told to leave by midnight every day. Okay. Sorry. The shady shit happens after midnight, so I guarantee you following her would be a fruitless effort. Okay. Sorry. Take it back. No, no, no. You're fine. I'm just I'm just trying to explain it to you why why she's not relevant. Gotcha. Okay. So we could be trying to figure out a way to, you know, stay here until her... I just bought the room, guys. We oh, have this did. room. Yeah. The northern room is ours. Do as we please with. Just don't break anything, please. I made a promise. I'm going to go in there and wreck everything. <laughs> Good way to get a fucking sneak attack on your ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to go in there and lay on the bed and take a nap. Yeah, I'm um, thinking we all hit that room. All right. Well, so, except um, except he's, for he's, El he's Rock, who's currently getting his massage from Yabaz. Nobody tell him. We're just all going to be in the northern room. He's going to come up and think we left. <laughs> He's out there getting his yabobs fondled. Do you mind? All right. Well, I would like to uh, take a closer look around this room. Just uh, good old uh, looky Lou. Sure. Make an investigation check. I'm going to help him look around the room. I don't all know right. Then the you have advantage on your investigation check. All right, I guess I'll jump in on this. Uh, he, it, he, as soon as one person's helping, he has advantage. It's not going to help anymore. 
for more people. Yeah, you can't do super advantage for checks. All right. So, yeah, as you're kind of poking around, uh, you do find that the wall in the, like, like, this is like a rectangular room. And in the northwest corner, you find, like, a section of the wall that if you kind of push on, it's on hinges and opens up, revealing a uh, hallway beyond that quickly wraps around to some stairs. And there's also this rather foul, sewer-like smell co- emanating from it, like wafting out of this now open secret door. I'm going to turn to Shen and ask him if he wants me to cast a bonfire. No, that's all right. Uh, let's go get our party member real quick. I'm sure he's not uh, busy, as I would notice that there's only two people in here and we're missing somebody. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, you know, a few minutes pass. Yabaz finishes up his uh, massage as they are looking for that secret room. I'll throw him there. I just bought the room for a gold a day, so out of character, a silver two, you'd be fine. Perfect. So I tip the man and leave the room, How following the party. Uh, three silver. Okay. Yeah, he's like, oh, thank you very much, sir. You're welcome back anytime. All right. I don't know where he was, so I'm just going to hang out in the room. One of you two go get him. All right. I'll go get him. Okay. Yeah, he emerges from the room. You grab him. And you are all in this room with this open secret door. So, what do you guys do as you cram into this uh, 10 by 15 room? What's in the room? Like Well, on the in the center of the room is a like massage table. On the eastern wall is a little shelf with some vials of oils and perfumes for use in a massage. In the northeast corner is where that secret door has been kind of pushed open slightly. A sewer like smell wafting out from there. Mm. I am not dying to shit again. Can we see down the door? Is there any? Well, you can see or... that, you know, it kind of like it goes like and wraps around to start heading south down some stairs. Yeah. And uh, so you're going to push the door open more and go take a look at straight down the stairs? Um, yeah. I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Is it light or dark? It is dark. Do you have dark vision? I do. Um, I do as well. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so as you look down the these stairs, it looks like it goes down quite a ways. Probably 60 feet. Sorry, 30 feet. My bad. And uh, at the end of it, you can see um, kind of like a shimmering reflection, like there's water at the, ba- at the bottom of the stairs. So it is part of the sewer. Certainly smells like it. I'm not dying to shit again. I turn to Elrond and ask if I should cast Bonfire. Uh, Bonfire? I don't know what that is. (laughs) It creates a bonfire. It creates a bonfire. Mm, If I overhear you, I would recommend against it. It might be pretty flammable down down here. I don't know. Yeah, we we already made this mistake, boys. Let's not do it again. And it would also draw attention, which we don't need. We're trying to be sneaky. Sneak a snake. Hmm. Well, so... How dark is it down there? Is it dim or is it dark? Dark. You don't see... There's no light. Yay. You said it goes down to, like, a T? It looks like it goes left and right from it, there. It looks like it op- it goes down to a uh, a pool of water, like like uh, ah. like it's a room, but it's been flooded at least partially. Ah, okay. And because of the angle, you can that's about all you can tell. You can't actually see what the room looks like. 
Yeah, roof of the stairs are in the way. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right, well, one of you two dark visions go uh, poke your head down there and see if there's any doors or hallways. Yeah, I'm going to go... I can't see shit. I'm going to go 15 feet down the stairs, see if I see anything more. Okay, you go about halfway down the stairs. And, you know, <clears throat> the angle lets you see that the room is, you know, at the like stairs meets water. Mm-hmm. And it then continues across the water uh, at least five feet to either side of the opening and at least 15 feet across. You don't see walls yet. I'm going to regret this. All right, I'm going to go all the way down see if I can see anything more. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with them. Okay. You go all the way down, followed by your party member. And as you get to the bottom, you you find out that the room is actually exactly 15 feet across, to the but to your left as you come down the stairs, it only goes about 10 feet before ending. To the right, it goes about 25 feet. Across from you, immediately as you come down the stairs, is a five-foot-wide tunnel that looks to head south before bending off to the east, to your left. And over on the right is another opening, um, a sliver kind of show of, of uh, cause you have dark vision, you can see, uh, you know, a sliver of visible area kind of showing you that there's probably another room over there. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to see if I'd noticed anything out of the order. Okay. And uh, I'll help him. All right. Make a perception check with advantage. Wait, hold on. Elrond, what's your perception? Too late, buddy. Alright. So if you're wondering who has the highest, it's me. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured that. I can't see in the dark, though, so mine would be useless. Uh, How good your perception is if you always roll a zero? KH1. You forgot the one. Keep you higher. Have KH, but you do not have the one. KH1 minus one. Gotcha. Copy. Right now it's trying to keep the higher negative one. Is six good enough to notice anything under? Well, you can tell that the the walls are not masonry. It looks to be carved out of rock. I thought you were going to say the water was wet. Also, the water, which is in fact, you have confirmed its wetness, uh-huh. is about two feet deep. Is it full of poo? It's murky. Um, and it, it's Foul smelling, but it doesn't appear to be actual shit. Oh, it's a pee pee toilet. So it's so it's more like uh, a bathtub drainage. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's worse mold. than that. Um, do you know what the term gray water means? Yeah, ah, it's gray water. Gotcha. That's gross. So the air is still highly flammable. Um, while it stinks, you don't think it's at a dangerous level. You, you're not, like, on the verge of falling unconscious. Okay, okay, okay. So we can light a torch probably safely. Probably. Uh, does, I'm going to send Elrond back up the stairs to... Actually, no, I'm just going to walk up the stairs and ask if anybody has a torch on them. I have candles. Little, little candles are a little less bright. I also have a hooded yeah. lantern, but I, I'm not going to um, try to Is a hooded lantern just the one you can turn off and on? It's the one that casts out a, a pretty wide cone, or it's only like a five-foot area around you. 
Yeah. So how oh, far? Okay. So you, can, how... you can reduce it down to a candle. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're at the bottom of the stairs, right? And we're looking straight down. There's that tunnel, and there's a tunnel over there on the right as well. To your it's right, like a... it looks like it's it's like a doorway into another room or another chamber of some kind. Like, like it doesn't look tunnel like. It's it's bigger than that. All right. but, oh. but you're only at the bottom of the stairs, so you don't really have any more information about it. All right, I'll strike up a tinder and light my hooded lantern and uh, head down there. Okay. I should have brought a bunch of. Snakes. I have it in dim mode. Okay, you have your hooded lantern. How much oil do you have on you? Two flasks. So that's like two hours worth. I think it's an hour of flask. Yeah. Okay. okay. I may come with uh, an hour's worth of oil in it from the store. Yes. No, well, then I have three, technically. Okay. All right, yeah, so you go down there, kind of casting your dim light all over the walls. Um, it, it, is there any dwarves in the party? Any what? Dwarves. No. No? Okay. No. Never mind. Um... Also, on, on my way through the hidden door, and I'm assuming everybody came with, I close it so that it's not uh, obvious right. that... Making sure that there's a way that we can open it from this side. Uh, it doesn't appear to actually have a latch. This looks like it's a very simple door. It's just on a hinge, and like the one side of it's been plastered and painted to blend in. So we could pull on it relatively easy to open there's it. There's a handle. Gotcha. All right. Well, it's more of a knob, wait, but yeah. Wait, did we lock the do we lock the door to our actual room? You did not. I'm still at the top of the stairs technically, so yeah. you can go I'm back gonna, through and lock it if you'd like. We, yeah, I'm I mean, gonna go. That's I'm gonna do that. All right. Yeah. So you go in there. Uh, the door does have a lock on it. There is no key. Does it have a bar? No, no bar. Looks like to be an oh. actual lock. Damn it, shut. I say, like, yeah, can I uh can I pound a pit into it? Like quietly? Yeah. Muffle it with some cloth. Uh yeah, you could. You you could very easily just pound a python into the uh into the uh door jam, kinda wedging the door shut with it. Alright, I will we'll do that. I'll make sure to cover it with some cloth or leather to deafen the blows a little bit. Obviously they're gonna hear it in the bathhouse still, but they might not be able to tell what it is. All right, uh, why don't you go ahead and make really, a stealth check, then? Pound really, really quietly. Yeah, for sure, because you're just kind of pounding the piton into the uh, the gap between the, the door and the door jam to kind of lock it, to kind of wedge it locked, you know, you don't have to hit it with a lot of force, but uh, since you're trying to be stealthy, make a stealth check. I can have advantage, because I'm being, uh, well... Sure. No. All right. I, I was... I'm doing more than just trying to be quiet. I'm, I'm adding to it. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, the I got you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. With advantage. Well, it, you, you kind of like, you know, put like some like cloth and leather over and just kind of go <clears throat> right into the, uh, you know, one below, right into the door jam, nice and wedged shut. But you could probably easily remove it from the side, you know, which is oh, a quick pry. Okay. Doesn't you don't yeah. like feel like you made a lot of noise? You somebody should also put a chair underneath the handle. Ah, we got enough shit going on here. There's no chairs in here anyway. It's just the uh, massage bench. You could always put the bench in front of it. Yeah, I'll slide the bench in front of it. It's fixed. <laughs> <laughs> the bench is really fixed else? to the floor. In front of it. Uh, <laughs> You guys think we should go to the tunnel or to the room first? Let's go to what looks like the room first. That actually, I'm going to. Te I'm gonna slap my staff on the water and see if anything pops out of the water. Okay, so you go splashy, splashy, splashy. Nothing happens. Is your staff ten feet long? Hmm. I have no idea how big my staff is. <laughs> is it Get just the staff? <laughs> is, it, is it like an arcane focus staff? Yeah, arcane focus. Yeah, staff. it's not ten feet long. It's like, it, you would be able to basically <laughs> reach like five feet. Okay, yeah, just splash around. So you okay. got a little bit of poopy water on you. 
Well, I also have a staff, so we can tie them together and make a 10-foot pole. <laughs> well, you have to have some overlap to actually be able to lash them together. So it's really, it's really like a 9-foot pole. Well, I walk four and a half feet. <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go to that, uh, what looks to be like a room. All right. Yeah, you guys kind of, you know, two feet of water. I think, I, th- I don't think there's any particularly short people in the party. So you just kind of have to like do like that, like weird shuffle walk you do when you're in like the water that's only up to your shins. Mm-hmm. Somebody say my name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and I, as you kind of look at it, you. you see a uh, ten foot wide, fifteen foot deep chamber, uh, carved out of the same rock as the rest of the place. There you go. Doesn't appear uh, to have anything of note in it. Indeed. Mm, can I look if I can? Yeah, I like the albums. You know, see if I can see any holes or do hickeys. Sure. Make an investigation check. And I'll help. Okay. Advantage. Mm-hmm. So, as you're kind of poking around, um, on the southern wall of this, you find. You know, where it kind of like shifts from like natural stone to almost like a, like someone had like tried to like rebuild the wall here, but make it look natural, but it's not quite right. Unnatural stone. Like, like you, th- you think it might have been open at one point and it's since been uh, filled in. Huh, how suspicious. Oh, super cool! Oh, we have a we have a torch, right? So I don't need to use dark vision. Uh, no, I I have a hooded lantern, so we have dim light right now. Okay, it's not easy to see, but um, so would it appear to be some sort of secret door? It appears to to be some type of secret door. Yes, I'm gonna go push on it. I will grab her and prevent her from doing so, and take a closer look at the door before said pushing happens. <laughs> So, to be clear, you're attempting to locate anything that might be uh, an opening sneaky harmful fun, yes. to you. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. Go ahead and make another investigation check to check for traps. You're going to have to go out and uh, see if you know how to... uh, It does not appear to be trapped. Okay, now you can push on it. Because it's hard push on it. It's hard. All right, yeah, you kind of push on it. And it, 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 you, you push and you push. What's your strength score? Uh, the big number or the little number? Uh, the raw score, not the modifier. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. So you push on, push on. It's 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 pretty tough, but you feel it kind of shift and shift, and then suddenly all you you guys hear like you know rumble, rumble, rumble as 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 several large pieces of of stone kind of give way, and he pushes into with a splash the room beyond. Which uh, is like a ten foot wide section. Like this room had been like, bit, like cut in uh, two by this wall and doorway here. And kitty corner from you, you can kind of see what looks to be opening up into another chamber. How suspicious! Suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Um, yeah. I investigate this room. Sneaky boy, go look. I have the lantern. I'm the opposite of sneaky right now. Okay, fine. I'll go look. Yeah, okay, I'll go. and you're attempting to sneak? No, 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 no. I was just trying to send him up there because he has the lantern. Okay. You have I'll dark sneak. vision. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, no. sneak, I'll sneak behind him. Behind me? Well, if he's yes. not being stealthy, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, no. <laughs> Who that noise? Oh, I wonder. Right. I was just looking at the uh, hooded lantern for the, the light radius stuff. 
six hours on one thing of oil. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> okay, so well, uh, it is. Yeah, it's thirty thirty. So thirty bright, right, thirty right. dim, and then it's five foot when it's hooded. Yeah. So who's so that, uh, looking into this room? Me, uh, me and Fiend. Who's in front? Me. Fiend. All right, Fiend. So you kind of go around that corner, kind of looking, and you can tell that this is a fairly large room, maybe fifteen by twenty feet. A hallway leads out of the south. However, that appears to have collapsed. And uh, you can tell that it, it's basically impassable. To the east, you know, kind of like straight across from you, you can see that it goes out of this room through another corridor to a, a room that has... Uh, this is all still flooded, by the way. Uh, that looks to have some uh, objects in it. And that's when you kind of see something floating in the water of this, this closer room. And uh, as you look at it, the movement kind of catching your eye. Uh, you see what appears to be floating face down in the middle of this uh, murky gray water a, a bloated corpse of a shirtless male human. Slices like knife wounds cut into the back, plainly visible. Poke it with a stick. <laughs> Is there anything else in the room besides the body that we notice? No, you don't. Besides, uh, besides the objects, right? Right. So this is kind of like where you're looking. Look up. We're in D six. you the body is floating in like the middle of D six. You're at the corner to the north where uh, the uh, secret door is. Okay. I want to poke it with a stick. All right. So you walk over to the body, and jab it with a stick. Kind of spins a little in the water. Your jab wasn't perfectly center of mass. The body does not react. All right, it's safe for me to come through then. Yeah, I'm gonna turn to Elrond and say, "Well, can I? Like. Can I look up at the ceiling and see if see anything?" Okay. Yeah, you look up at the ceiling. Uh, and you can see that. Uh, the ceiling is braced by these, uh, it's a, it's like nine feet tall to the ceiling, and the ceilings are braced with thick wooden beams, as if to reinforce it to stop it from caving in on you. Anything super out of the ordinary? Uh, give me a perception check. The wood beams, while they look sturdy, are somewhat sodden, and you think that it would take a bit of effort. But if you had to, you could probably cut, you could probably break one or two of them and collapse part of the structure, like this room you're in. Okay, cool. Man, I wish I had snacks. I have Oreos. Lucky yeah, I mean, there's a yeah, I've got these like, Ritz toasted chips. They're actually pretty good. There's a body floating right there if you're really hungry. <laughs> I, I mean, you do have the spell bonfire, so you could you could cook something up real quick. I'm uh, I'm gonna actually do that. Under my oh my. bonfire on the body. You're gonna get poisoned. Okay, you, you cast bonfire on the body. The the f normal like bonfires like this, like this bright, merry, like orange flame, like you would get when you burn wood. Uh huh. This time, the flames are black and almost seem to suck up light as a putrid, rotting smell fills the room. You smoke mother. wafting off this body. Can make, I get out of Making this room now hard out. to see in. <laughs> yeah, the, I'm backing The stench out, is now choking in this room. I'm I'm going back. So you guys back up, kind of hacking and coughing this horrible stench and of burning human remains, uh, afflicted with some like a tinge of something else. Like that—that that was not normal. You've, you've seen bodies burned before. That wasn't fucking normal. All right, so the other hallway then. But there's still more. But now it's smoky. Thanks, fiend. 
You're the one that suggested him eat the body as a snack. I didn't tell him to cook it. Yeah, okay. that was me. You brought the body up. Ah! So we don't want to go that way eventually when it stops burning. The fire, the fire, like only lasts a, a little bit. So when you when you stop concentrating yeah. on it, it goes out. Yeah, yeah. So the body's done burning. It's just whatever necrotic spell they put on it. I see. Okay. Burned well, away yeah, with. I'm it. uh, I'm down Shin. If you want to go the other way, then. Wait, 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 wait. You want to go east past past D six past the body, or you want to go back up? to D5 the tunnel. Actually, I'm, under, I'm already back at D5. Yeah. I don't know where you guys are. Under, I want to see if there's any, like, dark... I wonder if uh, I recognize any dark magic cast on the body that would cause that smoke. Okay. Um. Yeah, go ahead and give me an Arcana check. Uh, not that. That would have been bad. While he's doing that, I'm going to go back upstairs and put a bear trap on the inside of the uh, the trap door, or the, the hidden door. Okay. Do you see I have a, to have a bear trap? I have a hunting trap in my inventory. I'm not sure what kid I got that from, but... <laughs> I'm not sure either. Um, but, okay, yeah, if you, have a, if you have a trap, you can definitely place it. Oh, my background, that's why I got that. Ah, okay. I was just see, looking, you're yeah, my background. not sure. That. You don't know of any magic that would cause that. Okay. Yes. Now there's a bear trap at the top of the uh, the stairs, right? Right. Just just past the uh, the corner. How, okay. The, the only thing you would you, you would know, fiend, that generally speaking, magic that causes your bonfire to react like that probably not good magic. Yeah, it's that's probably evil. That's what I was really looking for. I'm gonna let them know that also. All right, I'll come back downstairs with the lantern and uh, listen to his story. Bad <laughs> right. juju caused black smoke. So you guys saying uh, tunnel? Yeah, 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 tunnel. Uh, I guess Elrond and I will lead the way through the tunnel. Yep. Yeah, Steve and I can't see very far, but uh, we can uh, see. Stuff. I actually have dark vision as well for sixty. You do. Yes. Oh, okay. So I'm the only one without dark vision. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's usually the other way around. Oh. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Fiend, you're leading the way again? Yep. All right. You head down. I'm in the, the middle. All right. So you're heading down that tunnel that you ignored before, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Just, I'm just clarifying to make sure. D5 yeah. East Tunnel. Right. So you start heading down there, and you bends to the uh, left. And you can see that... Uh, as, as you kind of look to the left, the tunnel continues for 10, 20, 35 feet. At the end of it, there is a set of like, carved stairs in the limestone tunnel leading up and to the right, like a curve. And uh, they're, it, it's only like a half flight of stairs, so you can tell that uh, the tunnel continues to the south, but it looks like it's dry, at least, over there. Um, Does the tunnel yeah. look suspicious at all? Any traps, possibly? For, is this, is like, this is like this is like carved out of rock. You said, right? Yes. We're speaking purely from PSD or PTSD. Sure. Well, <laughs> go ahead. So, are you just like taking a quick look to see if there's any traps that stand out to you, or are you like advancing down the tunnel checking for traps? I'm um, advancing down the tunnel. Or, all right, Fiend, wanna... Are you checking for traps? I'm just gonna. Help uh, Elrond look for traps. Yeah, I'm not advancing yet. Okay. Well, then, Elrond, go ahead and give me an investigation check. You... Oh, my God. My slash button is stuck. Okay. <laughs> All of the slashes! Uh, uh, perception, or what did you say? Perception, Investigation. Right? You investigation. Are, you are attempting to determine if traps are present. Oh my god, my keyboard right now. Perception is to see how colorful the room is. Investigation is to see how bad the uh, the death will be. Right. Yeah, you don't see any traps. Alright. And I tell Fiend I don't much. 
60 feet of dark vision, but uh, I'll follow you. And I'll bring up the caboose with the damn lantern. Yep, I'm back there too. <laughs> okay. Is there another map section or no? There is. Uh, I'm going to give you a description before I uh, show it. Okay. So you guys advance up to the uh, stairs, kind of climbing the stairs up into the dry area. The tunnel turning to the south. At the top of the stairs, you can see that the tunnel continues another 30 feet to the south, ending in a closed door. Now you have dark vision, right? Yeah. Okay. So on the door, you can see that the door is carved with the figure of a powerfully built human but with a skull head and long curved blades where his hands should be. Fuck. Uh, is there anything, can you see any light like underneath the door or anything? You do not see any light underneath the door. Okay. Checking, I just spill whiskey everywhere. Oh, huh, interesting. Can I do a quick comm check? I hear you. I'm uh, clicking on different spots of my screen. So we're at the bottom of this hallway. You're at the, door. the you're ah. at the top of the stairs in that bend, looking south at that door. And that's a door. Okay. I feel like this is some. That's my uh, it's my display fusion taskbar. So if I click on my taskbar on my second monitor with display fusion, actually my uh, key up doesn't work. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Okay. Well, so with uh. Shins, uh, dim light. Can we see? It's only five feet, guys. I, I I don't have the lantern open. It's only a five foot circle of light. Okay, how often it's enough, can I use? It's enough for often, me to see not tripping. How often can I use a cantrip? As often as you would like. As often yeah. as I'd like. Yes, it does not yeah. cost you anything to cast it. I can use uh, bonfire whenever I want. You can literally put a bonfire every five feet forever. Yeah, but I want to burn. Well, you have to so... remember that each, it does take an action, so it's about six seconds of time to cast a cantrip. So you could put it like in front of you every five feet, but it will take you forever to get anywhere. Okay. Um, do you guys have any useless items, I guess? Um, do you might have any sticks? What, what are you looking to do? Oh, I have. I, I can cast light as long as I touch something. Okay, I'll give him a handful I, of ball bearings. All right, can I touch one ball bearing and cast light? Okay, and it does yes, it. you can. The ball bearing begins glowing, casting off this bright light in all directions. Can I just, like, throw it down the hallway and investigate the hallway in the bright light? Sure, yeah, so you kind of do, like, this underhand toss so you don't, like, make a loud noise as it hits the door or anything. Illuminating the entirety of this hallway. Please make an investigation check. Mm -hmm. I think it's two, if I recall, because I just did it. <laughs> scrolling, 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 scrolling. Yes, two. Okay. So this, this is especially highlighted because you, you kind of tossed the, uh, the light. You can kind of see like a shimmer in the lower left and right corners of this hallway as it kind of goes down. Almost like... Um, Recently, there has been like somebody that was like something wet was kind of dragged through this hallway and that then dried out, but not quite yet at the corners. Mm, fresh. You, know, you, oh, you would dear. you you would think that based on how dry it is, it's probably been within the past several hours. Okay, and it goes it leads to the door. Uh it's this whole hallway. This whole hallway. But as he said, like, a dragging thing. It looks like it's dragged through where the door is. Well, these aren't footprints. It, they're just, like, remnants of water in, in the edges. Okay. So you you, you can't tell the, a direction. Um, but it, it's not like someone came through with muddy boots. Okay. So it's water, not blood. Uh, we... Yes, you can tell because you have nice bright light that and you can see in color. It is, in fact, water and not blood. Okay. Hmm. 
Christine, you want to go forward? Or anyone want to go forward? I guess it's nice and bright. <laughs> yeah, I'll start walking forward. Sorry. Okay. Uh, how many ball bearings did you give me, Shen? A handful, so like 50. <laughs> <laughs> He has a bag of a thousand, so yeah, handing out fifty dollars. I have three bags of a thousand. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's got ball bearings for days. So yeah, as you guys all approach this door, can I have everyone give me an a religion check? Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. 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 Secret tunnel. Oh my god. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm, I'm in the back of the group. I'm so. religious as fuck, and I got a bullshit. <laughs> Coming in hot. <laughs> Does he get advantage as a paladin? Nope. <laughs> I thought he was a cleric. Wow. Oh. You're high. oh. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. I'm not religious. Yeah. So you guys are all walking down this hallway. <laughs> Spooky carving on the door. Elrond, you actually recognize the figure that is depicted on that door. And you, rec it of... you recognize it as a depiction of Baal, the chaotic uh. evil god of murder. Oh, oh shit. I heard he's fun at parties. It's like I've seen this at a past life before. <laughs> <laughs> it would seem so. <laughs> In an alternate universe, when I was somebody else, <laughs> uh, I tell the party that I'm like, hey, this is the homie Ball right here. Yeah, <laughs> and describe him as as ball. as under did. That right there is Ball. <laughs> that is Ball for sure. Daddy Ball. Daddy Ball. Anyone want to push the door? <laughs> I'm going to screw it. Oh, what are you, you well, going to do? Again, I will catch him be or her before she pushes the door open and uh well first i'll have a listen and then i'll have a look all right give me a perception check for the listen Ooh, can i open my ears up too and help him sure i'm all right <laughs> you can't really help somebody listen i just <laughs> caught my freaking key up when i was hitting enter rookie <laughs> i don't hear Why? shit Nope, you don't. Sound silent. Give me the investigation check, though, as you check the door for traps. <laughs> nice. Okay, the door does not appear to be uh, trapped in any way. Is it locked? I'm going to pick that ball bearing up and put it in one of my pockets so that it's not glowing bright-ass fucking light. Okay. <laughs> you can do so very easily. What would happen if I swallowed said ball bearing? If you if you mask it at all, it's because it's a spell. If you mask it at all, it goes dark. It's not like putting a flashlight in your pocket where it'll still show through. Oh, that would be cool if I could just have a bad it, It's here. like um it's like a lot of modern smartphones have sensing technology. If you like cover the top of it with your face, it'll just turn the screen off. Same thing. Oh yeah, like when you're taking a phone call or something. Yeah, yep. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, that, way, that way you don't have to worry about like making sure it's completely sealed in your hand. As soon as you close your hand around it, it basically turns off. Yep. That's it's, but, it's, it's, a a small, it's a smart no, light ball, so ball there. Is, is, it, is it still on or is it turned off? If he off was to open his it? hand, it would it would be lit. But, by, but yeah. by because he closed it, it, it basically the light turned off. So even though his hand may not be able to perfectly seal against light, you don't have to worry about light leakage. Okay, I just threw yeah. it in a pocket. So, so it's Same, gone. So if I, if I need to burn in a pocket, fuck. If I need to use another light spell, I, we can just pull that same ball bearing yes. out of the pocket and use it, right? Yeah, I absolutely. have to do it again. Uh, for I mean, it only lasts like a minute, I think, or an hour for light. I can't yeah, which. one hour. Yeah. So if you pull it out within that hour, it'll still be lit. Okay. All right. Good enough. That's why I picked it up. Yep. Okay. Don't need a fucking breadcrumb trail of lit up fucking ball bearings. No, no, no. You guys just want to leave burning corpses behind. So, what do you guys do now? Well, it doesn't seem to be trapped, so uh, by all means, fiend, push away. I'm pushing the door. Okay, you open the door. It's Re unlocked? It is unlocked. Oh, shit. Revealing an octagonal room beyond. 15 feet across, 
a door to the south and to the east, and an open hallway to the west. The south and east doors have carvings on them as well. The south door, which is directly opposite you, portrays a cloaked figure, the face hidden under a cowl. And in skeletal hands, you it, it clutches a screaming human skull. It's to screaming? the east, screaming, as in like the mouth is open. Oh, okay. To the east, you you see depicted a tall armored man wearing a bucket helm. The right gauntlet is painted black and clutches a set of shackles. Ah, uh, that's the bondage room. Kinky. All right. What about that western door? You said there's um. So what? Open you corridor. Said octagon. So what does the northwest wall look like? Carves. It's like a hewn stone. Okay, so it's a smooth wall. No all cloves or windows or anything. Right. I'm Are we about to go into the gates of hell right now? <laughs> I don't know. Are we? I feel like we are. Daddy. So, so who opened the door? I did. Make a religion check again, please. Wait, who? Everybody? No, just just the guy who opened the door. All right, fiend. So once they tell you that that the first door was ball, you're kind of like primed to think about the gods a bit, uh-huh. and you notice, and you can tell then from these depictions that these are also gods. The southern door is a depiction of Merkel, the god, the Lord of Bones, while the eastern door is Bane, the god of tyranny. Which means that these three doors depict one each of the dead three. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, um, tell me more. Or are we going through the door, guys? Are we all going to stand in the room labeled D nine? Um, I want to go towards. Which one has the? Which one has bondage on it? Uh, Eastern. Eastern. This, um, I want to go check out the Eastern door. Yeah, the Eastern door is the guy with the shackles. That's Merkel, right? No, that's Bane. Yeah. Bane. Bane. Merkel Bane. Bane, Bane, is, either... Bane is the god of tyranny. Merkel, who is uh, also the god of death, is to the south. The Lord of Bones, he's depicted kind of like a grim reaper, but without the uh, scythe. And he's holding in his hand, Hamlet style, a uh, a human skull that is that the mouth is agape and screaming. All right. Uh, can I pull the ball bearing back out of my pocket and look down that western hallway? Absolutely. So you pull it out, kind of casting the room in bright light. Mm-hmm. Western hallway, you can tell, goes about 15 feet to a set of stairs going down. Um, the light kind of diffusely reflecting off the ceiling and then hitting the bottom of the stairs kind of has that, that kind of like wavy shimmer to it that uh, tells you that at the bottom of those stairs is water. So, over kind of the way where the burning dead body is. Or burnt dead body. Burning. It would be t- it would be towards that way, huh? It is pointed that direction, yes. Okay. Hmm. Well, which way do you guys want to go? I feel like I don't want to go that way towards burning dead body. That was like five oh. minutes ago. We won't even smell it. Yeah, the body's done burning. I know, but what I'm saying is, like... It's if, freshly smoked human. If it's the god of death, and that shit was, like, dark magic, and they're both leading to the same point, I just kind of feel like that's a bad idea. I mean, All right. this whole idea is a bad idea, but I'm I, still here. Yeah. <laughs> so do you guys want to go south or east? So, someone flip a silver piece. Right. Um, well, are silver pieces marked on both sides like that under dark? Do we have uh, yes. Oh, okay. All right, somebody flipping a silver piece. Yeah, there's there's an obvious um reverse and obverse side of it. Okay, so east will be heads and south will be tails. Hey Google, flip the coin. I'm like, dude, what the fuck's a Google? <laughs> All right, south it is. <laughs> Look at that! I got south too. 
Um, okay, so we... I kind of approach the door, like, within five feet of it, and uh, make sure it's not trapped. Okay, make an investigation check. I guess I'll just do this uh, by myself and no help. <laughs> oh, what did I do wrong? Uh, it's nothing. It's the the bot is thinking. It's doing very hard maths. I can only mm. roll my okay. dice no. for you. Oh, oh, you got 13. We go with the first one. So, 13. Uh, the door is not trapped. Looking. Uh, I can tell if it's locked or not from that, or just attempting to open it, I guess. Well, yeah, there's really no physical indication. There's no like deadbolt or anything on the door, so no, you can't tell just by looking at it. You know, you'd have to try can to I attempt to open it? Yes, you can open it. You, like you, you go, you twist the, do- the, the knob, it open. you feel the latch unlatch, and the door kind of swings freely. Alright. Can I push it open and see if I see anything? Alright, yeah, you push it open. Revealing a 15 by 15 room beyond. On the floor of this room, you see three corpses cloaked with black robes. Okay, and this is Merkel, the... Wait, no. What Sorry. room is this? Uh, yeah, actually, I do have a description here. Good. Um, yeah, so lying on the floor of this otherwise empty room are the pale bodies of three humans in filthy black robes arranged in a triangular formation. A lit torch lies between them. A rough-hewn staircase to your right leads down to another torch-lit chamber. Cut the light kind of flickering off the ceiling. Uh, can I tell how long the torch has been burning? By any chance, or is it like almost out, or absolutely? It, torch? it looks like it has been burning. So torches normally last about an hour. It looks like it's been burning close to forty minutes or so. Hmm. Uh, we should run. You want to run already? Well, it's been burning for about forty minutes, and there's a second torch in another room somewhere else. So whoever's lighting these torches is obviously still here. Well, anyway, um, I'm going to put the ball bearing back. Okay. okay. Um, can I, like, peek around the corner behind the door right there on the D10, like, A1 square, and, like, peek down those stairs and see if I see anything with dark vision? Well, there's a torch. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, because I got peeked out. Can I peek down this, like, peek around that corner and see if I see anything down the stairs? It looks yeah. like it goes down. Yeah, you kind of peek it. Yeah, it looks like it goes down. You can see uh, the room. Like, like, like this area looks like it, like the the walls were hewn out of the rock. Like it's not masonry. As it, and as you look down, you can see evidence that that the room down there is at least partially collapsed. However, you can see evidence that there is something down there. Like, uh, some, like, manufactured block or smoothed out block. So, okay. can I take a closer look at this rough-hewn stone and maybe figure out how old it is? Sure. Give me a history check. Alrighty, yeah. So, you try to take a look at this, and you can tell... First, you can tell that this is limestone, which is typical of uh, the area. And you can also tell that it, it's been, it was carved out a long time ago. You, you would kind of think that this looks to be about the same age as you would expect, like, say, the sewer system to be. All right. You know, you know this was not done, like, recently. Can I try to take a peek at the bodies? Sure. I'm I'm assuming a well-lit area and see if there's anything abnormal about these human corpses. So you're going to walk up to them and do like a medicine check to see why they died and things like that? 
Um, it's 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 obvious that they're dead, right? They're not moving. Yeah. They're so. They're uh, I'm gonna poke one with a stick before he does anything stupid. Yeah, I'll let him do that. <laughs> All right, you poke one with a stick. Uh, go ahead and give me an insight check. Oh fuck. I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna say I'm like five feet behind him. I'm still at that corner, I guess. Oh yeah, how is the triangle shape? Are they like uh, foot out, like uh, lines pointing towards the corners, or are they they drawing the triangle edges? They are drawing the triangle edges. Ah, okay. All right, yeah, you kind of poke them. Nothing really happens. Yeah, it's dead body. What do you expect? All right, I will continue to search the body, search the bodies for anything. All right, you walk up to them, and as you reach out to, you know, kind of sh- start rifling through their pockets, they move, pulling, oh, shit. you know, pulling flails that they had hidden under under their robes out as they leap to their feet in an aggressive stance. Please roll initiative. <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker. Exactly. Surprise. Oh. This is this is surprise, isn't it? This is. I'd be really surprised though. I mean, I'm still technically in the D nine room. I think I'm in the lowest square of it. I'm I I'm still like near you too. You're probably in front of me in the door between D nine and D ten. So you're just trying to put me in front of me. I see how it is. Yep. <laughs> I should have cast. And I did oh, not get a chance to say so under dark, but I was planning on pulling my short bow out. But okay, yeah. I mean, that's nice that you were planning it. I didn't get a chance to say before they started poking the bodies. So, so it goes. All right. Well, Elron and Shin, you are both surprised by this sudden yeah. turn of events. Uh, so I think it was Fiend. Elron or Fiend that was poking the bot that was like looting the body. Uh, that's me. Elron. Elron looted it. Okay, Elron. So the guy you were about to loot is going to try to hit you right in the head with his flail. Nice. Dick. You can also tell that these these are skull... Like, the, the heads of the flails are shaped like skulls. Oh, not these guys again. Uh, does a 15 hit you? Mm, yes, it does. 13 armor. Alright. He does... One bludgeoning damage to you. A suspenseful amount of damage. Uh, <laughs> his buddy is going to make like a hand gesture like he's swiping at you with claws. And a magical rift of necrotic force heads your way. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oof. That's a big oof. Is that a hit or is that damage? That's, That's a hit. Okay. This is the damage. <laughs> oh, that hurts too. Well, I, see I haven't seen the result yet. I know, but it just already you doesn't. Might switch over to bang for, I, I for now. It, it's starting to get pretty slow. All right. Nine necrotic damage. Yikes. All right. All right. The, the third guy is going to run past you to engage Fiend. And he's going to try to smack Fiend with a flail. Does a 15 hit you, Fiend? Yeah, I'm at 12. You also take one bludgeoning damage. All right, <laughs> these, might, these might be more whiffle flails, but... Uh... <laughs> All, right. All right. Steven and Fiend were, were also surprised. And so we are back to Elrond. And Elrond, you may, you may do as you will. Wait, why was I surprised? I Stay, was... Underdark... I was with Shin. You have the initiative order backwards and myself out of place in it. I do? Yeah. Yes, yeah, you have the lowest first... the highest. I just noticed it, so. Yeah, wow, you're, you're right, I, I did reverse yeah. that. <laughs> that was a big oof. Okay. <laughs> oh well. Fiend, well, Fiend and Steven were surprised. He did well, his was, thing. I it was, was still a surprise round, so. It was still a surprise changed. round, so. Yeah, it wouldn't have changed any of the mechanics. Um, Then he would have... um. Then, you know, Shin and Elrond were also surprised. We're actually back around to Fiend. At Fiend, it is your turn. That's why I wanted to say so, something. The start of the non-surprise run, it actually does matter. Yes, it does matter. <laughs> Thank you for catching that. 
I, I just I was I was sitting there looking I, at like I, it was driving me nuts because I was like, why am I before the seven? Wait, why is it four in the I, Wait, what? I, I was thinking like maybe he flips it every once in a while. Maybe that's just a thing. Just the next. <laughs> Uh, I'm in melee, right? Yes, one of them has kind of put himself in melee with both Elron and Fiend. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rage. And okay. I can imagine this would make you angry. Yeah, this would piss me off. Um, <laughs> and swipe at the person who. Hit me, who hit me for, and just swipe at the person who hit me with my sickle. Okay, roll to hit. Uh, Oh uh, yeah, ask him. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and roll bang. Okay. I mean, under you can still keep using slash. I like those d8s being ones. That's really nice, actually. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a twenty-one hits them. All right. Uh... Is it? 1d4 plus 2 plus 2? Is that what it be with plus 2 melee damage? I was going to say, if you have the um, sickle in your sheet, it should autofill that. Well, for because you. he's raging. He hits a damage Oh, boost. I uh, forgot about that. Uh, it yes, it, yes, it would just add on top of that. So whatever the, the attack is plus whatever your rage bonus is, which I think is 2. I think it's just flat strength. E okay, yeah. And his strength is 14, so yeah, that'd be plus two. I drink and I know things. No. Yeah, that's... that doesn't look right. Should there that's... be another plus two there? So oh, look, he hit him again. Five? Huh? Yes. Yeah, like, he you rolled the a d4 one. plus two, but... Uh... See, that's the reason I like Slash better, is it shows you the role. I might be able to force that. Give me a, sh a second. It shows you what it actually enters for the role, and you can actually look at it and go, okay, yep, that is correct. Because I did... 1d4 plus 2 plus 2? Yeah, that's exactly what I did. Okay, it might be the plus 2 plus 2 that's confusing, and I'm not sure. Yeah, that would have that done it. Because it should have been just plus two, plus two. I was doing a t quick test to see if I stopped it from doing that. All right. Okay. Well, uh, I'll figure it out later. So, yeah, so you did five damage. Good. Anything else? Uh, no. No. All right. Then, in that case, Steve. All right. So, I have my my short crossbow. Crossbow. You have a crossbow. So, okay. Yes, I am going to pull that shit out. Uh huh. I am going to take aim at one of the guys that's on top of Fiend. Okay. Well, there's only one I guy in mate. There's like. There's a guy that hit Fiend in melee. There's a guy that ran past Fiend, and then there's a guy that shot Fiend with some like weird, you know, voodoo bullshit. All out right. of range. Wait, That's... that was Elron and Elron and Fiend. Okay, you're yeah. right. Sorry, Elrond, Elrond Goddamn. And me. I'm Sorry, uh, me. all right. I'm gonna go after uh, Voodoo Boy. All right, you go after Voodoo Boy who shot Elron. Right. Go ahead and roll to the hit, hit as you. Is that one d twenty plus my to hit modifier? Correct. That hits. All right, you shoot him for three. 
All right, and then I want to go ahead and use my bonus action to cast Sanctuary. All right, so. who are you targeting? Can I target myself? Absolutely, yeah. I, I, you must have just cut yourself Wait. off or something, because I, I only heard you cast Sanctuary. I didn't hear anything about who you're hitting. Yeah. So, yes, you, yes, you can uh, bonus action Sanctuary on yourself. Cool. What does Sanctuary do? Makes yeah. the enemies will require a check before they can attack them. So it makes it harder for me to attack him. Gotcha. All right, Shin. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out a short bow and uh, shoot somebody. All right. Well, who are you shooting? Oh, who looks good? I uh, I think I could sneak attack on one of them, can't I? Well, yep. There's the guy. Well, there's there's two of them actually. One is Justin Melee with Elrond. It's the one who hit Elrond. And then there's the guy that's between Elrond and Fiend that hit Fiend. And he's the one everybody else has been attacking? Uh, no. The guy the guy's in the back, The right? guy between them was just hit by Fiend, uh, with Fiend's, like, sickles. The guy in melee with Elrond only ha is uninjured. The other guy in the room was, was a guy at range. He's not in melee with anybody. He got shot by a crossbow. Oh, uh, okay. I will target the one in melee with Fiend, then. Okay. The one that's already been hit by a sickle. Yep. Mm -hmm. Proceed. That's to hit. That okay. hits. And yeah, that's the damage. All right, he dies. Perfect. Uh, wait, wait, which one was this? The one that was attacking uh, the Fiend? The one that was attacking Fiend. Yep, the metallic clank. His skull-headed flail falls from his grip, and he topples over. So there's a guy attacking me and the voodoo guy still. Correct. Anything else, Shin? All right. No, no, I'll just uh, stick with the one action. That's it. All right. Oh wait! Can I bonus action and throw the uh, the the ball bearing at the uh, the guy in the back just to annoy him? Yes, you can just kind of chuck it over there. He flinches. Um, oh, then it's their that. turn, okay. and uh, he is going to then target you, Shin, with his voodoo bullshit. He could try. Him flinch. He he. You notice he does like the thing, and as he's doing it, you. He flinches from your thrown ball bearing, and there's like this, <laughs> there's like this like score made along the uh, wall to, to to you. He missed by a mile. <laughs> I smile. Then the other guy's gonna try to bash Elrond in the head with his foil again. God damn it! Yes, he hit. He hits you for one. He hits so. you for four bludgeoning damage. Okay. So that's a total of... Wait, how much health do you have? 20. And now I'm at 6. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty So hurt. you have a 14 con? Elron, it's your turn. Mm, yes, I do. Um, okay, the guy right in front of me? Uh-huh. Can I use Tasha's hideous laughter? Uh, hideous laughter. Absolutely. What wisdom? What uh, saves does he have to make? I think it's wisdom, but I'm not sure. Um. Okay. Is it? I'm guessing it's intelligence. So it doesn't really say. It should. It says What's your it save? does. Oh, wisdom! Wisdom save. Wisdom. Okay. Fourteen. What is your spell saving throw DC? Thirteen. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he shakes it off. He begins laughing at you, in your face, what, like full-throated, full-throated, like snidely whiplash, evil laughter. That is quite unironic. Like when Hulk smashes Loki and calls him puny god. Oh <laughs> crap! I just realized I can't cast any spells while I'm in rage. Indeed. All right. Anything else? So, I 
I can't do anything, right? I can disengage, but it gives an opportunity to attack. You could. You can't disengage. Disengaging is an action, and it prevents an opportunity attack. So you oh, use your okay. action to cast Tasha's. So you can run away. You can move. But yes, if you leave his zone of control, he will get a free shot at you. Got three turns. Yeah, I'm going. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and. Who's up next? So you're done. Da, 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 da. Uh, I'm going to give Fiend Bardic Inspiration. Okay. My bonus action. And then uh, end my turn. All right, Fiend, it is your turn. The guy in front oh, of man. you is dead. The guy in front of Elrond appears to be beating Elrond to death. Um, I'm going to pick up that flail that he just dropped. Okay. okay. And go. Uh, what's the initiative order? Who just went and who's going? Elrond then Fiend, right? There you go. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Pick up that flail. Okay, you pick up the flail. Yeah, that was my. Yes, thing. you have a you have a flail, skull headed, in your inventory now. It it just acts yeah. like a normal flail, but it has that cool you know skull on the end of it, like it belongs from a heavy metal band or something. Oh, that makes it much better. All right, uh, I'm gonna run over. To the one attacking in melee with Elrond and attempt to bust him upside the head with it. All right, roll to hit. Dude, with Barding Inspiration, this is the hit. Or he has to choose. He huh? can, but he can choose to use it after he sees the roll. 15? Uh, that hits. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh... Yeah, it's one of the nice things about Bardic Inspiration. You can see the roll first. That's yes. badass. Wait, I can't. So I can only use it on. You can use it on a lot of stuff. We'll tell you what you can't use it on when you try. I can't use it for damage rolls, can Correct. I? Correct. It's 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 basically attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws. Gotcha. Pretty much anything you can use a d twenty on. With some exceptions, but mostly the d20 rolls. Alright, that bloodies him. Right, Steven, shoot. Bleeding and below half health. Steven, shoot him with your crossbow. So, should I shoot him or Magic Boy? Uh, go ahead. Let's just take him out first, and then I'll worry about Magic Boy. No, he's doing necrotic damage. Focus on the, uh, focus on Magic Boy. Rounds are six seconds, usually, so All right. keep, well, I'm... keep the pace up, guys. Yep, all right. Well, I'm going after Magic Boy. All right, roll to hit. Or, sorry, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, shooting a crossbow. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Smoking. You miss. Oh, fuck. Anything else? No. Shin? Um, well, I'll see that he missed and go for a short bow shot on the magic boy. Okay. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to target the guy that's in melee. Got it. Go ahead. Roll to hit. And he... Yeah, I can sneak attack that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, he, you have two allies and five feet of him. That hits. There we go. All right. Your bolt goes right through his eye socket, and he drops like a sack of potatoes. Thank God. Thank you. Anything else, Shin? Um, yeah, I'm going to run over and get up in that guy's face. The guy? guy? Magic boy, yep. All right, you run across the room up to this guy. Just stand in front of him, smiling. Mm -hmm. All right, at which point he, he kind of leers back at you and pulls out his own flail and attempts to smack you with it. He can try. <laughs> Does a 20 hit? 
Unfortunately, it does. <laughs> <laughs> he wallops you for eight bludgeoning damage. <laughs> oh, I take it. Wow. <laughs> Tank boy. I love it. Uh, actually, I have less health than you, but I knew that you wouldn't be able to take a hit, so that's <laughs> why I ran out. All right, but that is it for him. Elrond. Oh, all right. Can I uh, just go ahead and... Uh... Hey, he's not bloody yet, is he? Uh, no. He he is injured, right, but not bloodied. I'll stab him with my, my rapier. <sighs> take him hostage. It's way right. too much effort in this game to try taking people hostage. Interrogate him. So you're Shit. pulling your rapier and closing the melee? Yeah. All right. Well, if you're attacking, go ahead and roll to hit. No need to hit is four. That hits. Roll damage. And... Oh, so close. <laughs> oh, no. Rapier is a D8, so if you get a crit, that would have been 2D8 damage. That would have been oh, nice. that would have been perfect. It would have been badass. Oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> All right. That is enough. You stab him. He looks down. Little rapier blade right into the heart. Pull it out, and he falls. You guys are out of initiative. I spit on him. Ooh, all right, somebody heal me, please. <laughs> can I, I heal my... I can cast uh, the hands, you know. Healing hands. Um, right. under... What does that do? Nothing. Don't worry about it. I, I was just testing that I, I disabled the bot's ability to erase people's uh, rolls. What? Uh-huh. It, now, sure, it, uh-huh. The... Bangbot will now keep the original command you sent. You can you can ignore the eight. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> All right, hang on, guys. I'm looking up the mod. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Look up the module and see what happens next. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, so what is land hands? Uh, it's 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 just healing hands. It's one yeah. per long rest. I can touch to heal for my level and HP. Oh, okay. So you can heal him for two? Yes. Yeah, that's better than nothing. Can I cast Healing Word on myself? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, he only has two spell slots. Uh, I believe you get to add your spell ability score modifier to that. Yes. So it should be plus your charisma. What's your charisma modifier? Um... Oh, plus three. So, so I you, get five? You get five. Oh, fuck. Nice. Hey, uh, for some reason, it didn't update my sheet to the level. What? Ex- how much experience are we supposed to have? 435. Oh, I have 436. Cheater. <laughs> 435. <laughs> uh, I'm a... I'm gonna cast bonfire on one of the bodies. Okay. Do you are you carrying which one? Uh, the one furthest away from the magic body. one. It, am I close enough to tackle him as I see him start casting it, or her? Um, presumably, you guys are all kind of bunched together in this room. Okay, then I will proceed to tackle them. You don't need to cast bonfire in every single goddamn body. <laughs> Stop setting these on fire! <laughs> I want to get rid of the evidence. Well, I would like to search them. Well, search yeah, them. I'm gonna, light them on fire. I'm going to go search one of them. Are you pretty sure about which one? Uh, oh. the, the fucking guy who started walking towards us. The first guy. Okay. I'm going to search Magic Boy. All right. Damn it. I was about to say that same shit. God damn it. You can help. I searched searched the other one before Fiend can. Okay. So, in in order, Fiend, the one you're searching, uh, he He, was... There's three bodies. So, one's Fiend searching, one Elrond is searching, the other is Shin searching, is what I've uh, heard. No, Steven gets... Steven... Yes, Fiend's on the one. Fiend is sitting, sitting there tapping his foot, waiting for us to search the body so we can set him on fire. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Sorry. So, all right, Steve. So you're searching that one by Fiend. Yes. He, he is. Uh, he has a set of black robes and a money pouch containing <sighs> six silver pieces. Oh. 
Elrond, uh, you search the other one. You yeah. said it was black robes, correct? Yes, tattered black robes. I get the non-magic boy. Right, you got the non-magic boy. He still had his flail when he died. No one grabbed that, so you, you can grab that. Uh, there's also his tattered black robes, and he had a money pouch with two gold pieces in it. Fuck yeah. And then we come to Shin. Your guy had a flail, a skull flail, the uh, set of black robes, and a little, like, money pouch containing eight copper pieces and one electrum. <laughs> you did that just on purpose. I know you did that on purpose. <laughs> now I have to carry this one electrum around. What is it? What the fuck does, is it? An electrum does piece. Anybody, does anybody even uh, barter with electrum? No, not directly. No one, no one really does. It, it, it's it's one of those things it's, where it's it, has value, it has value. It has value, but it, it's like one of the most annoying coin pieces to deal with in D and D. So, so I so I generally have what, evil characters have it somewhere that they have a stash of electrum pieces because it's the most so, evil coin piece. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, it's 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 one to ten. So one platinum piece is ten gold pieces. One gold piece is ten silver. An electrum is five silver. It's a fifty cent piece. <laughs> <laughs> Get wrecked. <laughs> and Underdark knows I can't stand them. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of an inside joke. He loves to give them to me. Yes. <laughs> Whenever he searches somebody, there, there's there's like a 50-50 shot. I'll throw some Electrum on it just, just because he searched. Yeah. Or a piece of platinum with a skull on it. <laughs> kind of makes me want to go, uh, go trade in all my gold for Electrum. Well, I would, I would never <laughs> pick your pocket. He picks your pocket and like, throws it back in your face. Like, what the wait. fuck is all this shit? Okay, wait. We're in D10, right? Okay, fuck. I gotta go yes. back to the map. <laughs> so, you, you are in this 15 by 15 room. You enter usually through the, this, the so. Merkel door to, to now your north. To, to the west is a small set of stairs go, that went down to a partially destroyed room uh, from which you can see flickering torchlight coming. Oh Come, boy! Co like coming up like it's uh, approaching us? No, well, flickering like the torch is approaching the end of its life down there. Oh, I was going to say, being your before, light, the bodies on fire. Before yes. he gets around to lighting the bodies on fire, I will strip them of their cloaks so we can use them as disguises if need be. Oh, I already, I already picked. We, them we already all have the black cloaks, right? Yeah. Well, he said that they had a black cloak on. You guys didn't specify whether you took it or not before Fiend lit the bodies on fire. So he could say you didn't take them. So I'm specifying before it gets too far along that I am taking the black cloak off the body that I searched. Yeah, yeah. I, put, I put one in my inventory already. Okay. Yeah, I did too. All right. So you guys strip the bodies. That's perfectly all right. Fiend then lights them on, on fire. Uh, the flame does not react badly this time. Just, you know, you now have the stench of burning, burning bodies in this room. Got it. I'm getting hungry. Um, have you guys ever smelled burning hair before? It's not, yeah. Oh, it's I... not a pleasant odor, and these guys had hair. Oh, gross. Wait, Shin, aren't you covered in hair? I look over at him and say, don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> What hairspray do you use, Shin? <laughs> Suave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that, as the smoke starts kind of filling the room, I think we will end it there for the evening. Do a, uh, I'll start a short rest. I'll pass some rations out. It's morning time. Rest up and get our health. Yeah, I'm down for that. We'll we'll deal with that when we come back next session, though. Yeah, it's not finished yet, so don't. Don't uh, mark anything off on your sheets. Yeah, no, I'm just jotting and don't start jot my notes. Start a short rest. Mm. But, um, mm. I, I give uh, mm. I give you guys, except for I don't give Fiend one, but I give Elron and Steve some uh, smoked salmon rations. It's uh, Steven. You're Steve. <laughs> you're Steve. <laughs> yeah, you're Steve. Because every time I say Steven, everybody. Shut the.